Bonjour, I'm Vivian, and welcome to the beautiful Loire Valley of France, home to the world's most spectacular fairy tale castles. It is also the location of my home, a small neo Renaissance chateau which I share with my husband Simon, daughter Isabella, and whenever possible, friends and family. However, this is not our first chateau. For 17 years, we lovingly restored and adored a much larger castle until we decided to downsize. And now we are doing it all again, but this time on a smaller scale. So join us for some chateau fun, chateau life, chateau renovations, chateau travel, chateau food, chateau friends, and chateau love. Welcome back everyone. Welcome to the gorgeous Loire Valley where we are finally back at home and we have been so busy with our projects and lovely things to share with you. We have completely renovated the orangery and that is coming up very soon. A wonderful before and after. Plus, of course, we still have to show you the last leg of our Venice trip, which was in Verona. But right now, as you probably guessed, Easter's around the corner and today is all about getting ready for Easter. We have some great desserts to share with you and also some decorating, very Eastery, springtime themed things to serve at the table. You're also going to be decoupaging or trying to decoupage Easter eggs. Now, you may remember that we started our channel almost exactly a year ago where it was Easter then as well. And so if you want to see the full details of the carrot cake as well as seeing how we painted blue and white, eggs definitely check out that episode there'll be a link right right here or here <laughs> and uh let's first of all do some flower arranging it's springtime so we definitely need some flowers from the garden let's see what we can find so we have a walk through our little woods here and i'm hoping we'll see something wild and pretty waiting for us. There's the little tree house. So this is the back of the chateau and I just love to see it against the blue sky. We haven't had a lot of blue sky lately, so that's great. I'll show you the front in a minute. Now this is something that I don't like to see, which are dandelions growing in the path. Oh dear, that's not supposed to happen, but they're edible and they're so bright and cheery. So let's pick some for our arranging. They're so pretty. Look how many I have. So now I'm heading up for the tulips. We're actually leaving in a couple of days to go to the States. I'm so excited because I haven't seen any of my family now for over two years since before the pandemic. And we're not only celebrating Easter together, but also my brother's getting married. But we have Isabella and Jack here right now. And so we're having a faux Easter, a feaster. <laughs> We haven't been able to get out and do much weeding lately because of the bad weather, but some of the flowers have still done us proud. The tulips are gorgeous. Not as many as last year, but again, we weren't expecting any with the frosts. So let's pick a few of these for our Easter festive arrangement. Oh, and there's that cold breeze again. One thing I find really fascinating is that the marguerites that we planted last spring actually survived this winter. And they seem to be doing really well. We lost a few, but there they are. And uh, the climbing roses as well. Sadly, our topiary boxwoods are doing less well, but I think we can bring them back to life. And we'll walk around and see the front of the chateau in the sunshine. You can see the metal panels that we had replaced for the orangery. What a beautiful day. And 
and just a little of this because the smell will be glorious. Mmm. As I need to prune my box hedges anyway, I'm going to take just a couple of bits of this for some greenery. So something that happens a lot in a chateau when there are so many projects going on and people milling about is that things get broken. And as some of you may remember, if you saw our big bathroom transformation that happened, gosh, last spring, I think it was, early summer. I absolutely love biscuit de porcelain or white biscuit porcelain, which can be made by Sèvres, Limoges, um, lots of, of beautiful porcelain makers. And I love to collect this white porcelain. Unfortunately, because it's porcelain, it can get broken. And one of my projects that I have to do immediately is try to glue this back together. I don't know if it's gonna work, fingers crossed. It's a big puzzle and I have a gazillion little pieces here that may or may not get stuck back together. This is gonna be fun. We have our flowers, let's go in. Make some lovely desserts, do some great decorating, flower arranging, and some special Easter eggs. So I think I want to go for this one. Um, this is a special back wrap one we got for our wedding, so I think it's perfect for Easter. <laughs> Flowers ready to go. Now we need to decorate the rest of the dining room. So we have the flowers. We have some of the decorations from last year. Here are the blue and white hand-painted eggs, plus our box of Easter goodies, and some very happy, festive table linen. So let's get going. My favorite Easter decorations of all are these adorable little Easter trees that we bought when Isabella was a toddler. They have these really sweet little, tiny little wooden ornaments that hang on top. And they remind me of all the years going past. Even though we're running out of the ornaments, I, we seem to lose a few every single year, but maybe we'll find a few little ones to replace them with. to be a year of lots of quail's eggs because we have the quail's eggs decorations and we're also making some special salads out of quail's eggs which we do every year and it's really fun it's all completely ridiculous yeah let me know when you're ready about it. oh i've been filming all of this <laughs> you have <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay sorry so anyway it's not chateau love unless it's completely Ridiculous. So in addition to our Easter desserts that we're going to be making today, we are going to make special Easter salads out of quail's eggs. And Easter is the only time of the year that I believe in using food coloring. I find it not that great most of the time. Stop laughing at me, Isabella. But I ordered the special online, extra healthy version of food coloring. And so we are going to make everything pastel because it's Easter. So let's start with the color grape, teal. I'm pretty excited by some of these colors, by the way. When I was a child, we only had three colors. And even though technically that meant that we were supposed to be able to make any color in the rainbow, it didn't usually work out that way. Are these good to start with? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, in go our lovely little quail's eggs. And Mr. Easter Bunny, with his rabbit ears on, naturally, is having some mowing challenges. Oh dear. So this is not proving to be so easy because of all the little missing parts. 
because so many pieces are broken or missing, I'm going to use this epoxy paste and see if I can reconstruct the rest. Wish me luck. While we're waiting for the quail's eggs to turn their lovely bright Eastery colors for our Easter salads, we are going to be making an Easter tiramisu. You only need a handful of ingredients. You need full cream for whipping, lady fingers, some rose flavoring, um, a little food coloring if you want to use food coloring, and also um, an assortment of fruits. So I'm going to be going for strawberries, blueberries, mango and kiwis for this dessert. Step one, in a container that's flat-sided, stack your lady fingers facing out all around the edge. It has to be flat-sided because otherwise the lady fingers won't line up properly and will shift and we don't want that. We want to have a nice, lovely out. tower all the way around the edges. You know how hard it is to make a vlog with Alexa in the house? For the Easter tiramisu filling, whip cream until it forms stiff peaks. Then add the rose syrup to taste. I think I added about five or six tablespoons. I then divided the cream into three different bowls to add three colors of food coloring because we decided we would like it to be particularly festive. Even though there are no children in the house and that would have been even more fun for them, we thought it was pretty fun for ourselves as well. You then add the cream one step at a time per color into your ladyfinger surround and refrigerate each color for about 30 minutes per color or you can put it in the freezer. Then for our quail's egg salads, I used a bed of spinach leaves. Then I added a little bit of beetroot for color and flavor. Some lovely carrots, because of course it's Easter. And a little bit of tabbouleh, also making it look very nest-like. And then best of all, out come our colored eggs. And they really do look fantastic. This is a really tasty salad, can be prepared in advance, and it's so much fun for this particular holiday. Okay, my sweet little bunny rabbit. <laughs> uh, can you film me mm -hmm. trying to release the tiramisu? Oh, that's going to be a challenge. Um. It is going to be a challenge, <laughs> but I think it's going to work out just fine. Mm -hmm. So, um, fingers crossed, because this is a very festive Easter tiramisu. And then I put some lady fingers across the base, and they set for about 30 minutes to an hour in the fridge per color. And then I put the whole thing in the freezer for about 30, 45 minutes. And now, fingers crossed, that this is going to work out okay. So. We are going to... Ah! Uh, give this a flip. What do you think, Isabella? <laughs> Let's hope it'll be good. So very slow, very gentle. So now you see we have a little tower and our colors are starting to bleed through a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to spoon the fruit all around the outside. Now it's starting to shift a little because I didn't leave it in the freezer long enough. So I'm gonna put it back in the freezer to let it set. Do you wanna try spitting some fruit in there in the middle, like on top? Or I think that's a great idea. Cute. I'm gonna put 
falling apart. No, oh, but it still looks beautiful. And I bet it's gonna taste delicious. Which is a big thing. Okay. So now if I were to do this again, I think I might do it in a clear vessel so that it wouldn't collapse quite so much as it has done here, but it tastes magnificent. Or perhaps make the cream a little bit stiffer or mix it with something like a little bit of cream cheese. But just the cream and the rose is actually quite perfect. Stop, stop crunching, stop crunching the, the shells. Those are the decorations. Wait, what do you mean these are the decorations? Do you think that the, do you, do you think that the quail eggs that are in the salad somehow magically got hard boiled and extracted from these quail egg shells? Magically? You're a very talented woman. <laughs> I don't know. What else would you use these for? Well, I, but still these are not the same quail eggs that are on the salad. These are the decorative quail egg shells and the quail eggs on the salad, which are out here. I mean, you're a scientist. You know that this is like impossible, right? Apparently my friends, these were the decorations. Now they're bubble wrap. They're very, they're very fun. Have you crunched one yet? No, give it to me. Crunch one here. Okay. It's really nice. Okay, let's not crunch all of them, but yes, that's very satisfying. Isn't that nice? Wait, yes. wait, 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 wait. You gotta do ASMR for the viewers. Okay. <laughs> now we made a mess. <laughs> So having just finished the orangery, we're going to give you a big before and after reveal of this room. But for those of you watching our Easter episode, we couldn't resist decorating the table in the orangery for Easter. And so I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek of that now. In addition to the dining room decorations, this is a totally different room. Well, the restoration of this biscuit porcelain statue is not perfect, but I think it came out pretty well and just in time for Easter. sorts of wacky wonderful things here today. This is a giant Lafitte Rothschild wine bottle that is also wine storage. <laughs> Isabella spotted the crystals. There's a collection of kilts. Uh, if anybody wants them for 20 euros each. and all kinds of stuff that I can't fit into my luggage. Um, gifts to take back to the States for Easter. This beautiful pie dish for Ashley. A gorgeous and painted candlestick from my mother. Isn't that beautiful? I would have painted something just like this myself, but I don't have time, but I know the work that's gone into it, so I really appreciate it. Some beautiful little gold glasses for you because you like them. And then we can go back to one more. Look at this beautiful Truma mirror. Isabella, you're my good luck shopping charm. So, sweetie, which color egg do you think tastes the best? They all taste the same. They've just got the colors neutral. <laughs> There's no flavor to it, I hope. I thought I might get you there. <laughs> it's not like smart. Oh, me too. <laughs> they're not like Smarties. They're, they're, they're just tinged with food coloring. It's not chocolate biscuits. Or... It's all 
so good. <laughs> We have some. We have some exciting. <laughs> we have some exciting serving happening. This is our Easter tiramisu, rose tiramisu with an assortment of fruits. And what's happening in there? You tell me. It's a rainbow. It's a Say something nice. <laughs> it looks amazing. Okay, it did get a little bit floppy. I agree. It did collapse ever so slightly. I'm not going to call this a fail because I know it tastes really, really good. No, I love the colors. Look at those colors. There's some beautiful and, blue, pinks, and yellows. everyone knows that last year's carrot cake was the bomb. What do you think? This is very sweet. I think it looks like a, like a children's birthday cake. It looks like a what? Excuse me? A children's birthday cake. It looks like an Easter. A child's birthday cake. It looks like a magnificent With Easter blue. extravaganza. It does look amazing. I mean, look. We're just going to taste beautiful. This looks beautiful. I think it looks delicious. Do you want to swirl it now? Oh, thank you, sweetheart. It looks delicious. I'm looking forward to trying it. The fruit looks Fantastic. It does look amazing. Doesn't it? Wow. Fresh you really fruit. Yourself. Sponge fingers. Okay, for anybody who's watching this, <laughs> and, uh, well, it doesn't have to be beautiful to taste good. It's the Easter Day Massacre. The Easter Day Massacre. Yeah. massacre. Yeah. massacre. No. You were like, no, you can have that one. You're not the only one. That piece is for Simon. Is that what you're tasting? I'm breaking my teeth on these pieces. I rocked it right here. <laughs> you mean the praline? <laughs> Not giving pieces of praline to some of my age. My teeth are likely to crush. Oh, honey, I didn't realize that I was making a geriatric dessert. Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the obsession with putting hard bits of something into a perfectly good dessert. It's the same as mince pie with a sixpence, and uh, or mince or Christmas pudding with a sixpence. Isn't that a tradition? Until someone gets the sixpence, yeah, everyone's <laughs> like, holy crap, <laughs> the next pie could be my last. <laughs> <laughs> and it's well, the same with the. At least uh, it's Easter. <laughs> or the other, the, the, other, the galette of wine that they do here, which is another thing where they put a ceramic, a ceramic porcelain figure or something in there. So until you've actually seen someone get it, you're always worried about it. You're the one who's going to crack your teeth on it. Oh. You know? well. losing your way around. I never thought I was going to so much troubles in your life. There's a lot of first world problems you just said. That. <laughs> exactly. I might crack my teeth on this dessert or that dessert or another dessert. Yeah, there's a lot you have to be careful about when people put... But I noticed that it hasn't slowed you down at all from the eating of the dessert. I'm having to go slowly. No, that's absolutely delicious. The rose is beautiful. That's the flavor of the pot. It's rose. The rose. That's <laughs> rose. The... Did you put rose in here? I did put rose in there. Oh. That wasn't the rose flower, right? It was like rose flavoring. Rose <laughs> flavoring, yes. Okay. Because you did put... <laughs> you did put lilies and dandelions in. I'm quite sure it was not too far out of the question. <laughs> Listen, I'm I'm a creative I'm a creative baker. <laughs> so I suppose you'd be grateful you didn't put grass in it. <laughs> oh no, oh no, 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 there's grass in there. <laughs> you didn't taste the grass. Oh my god. No. You'll feel it later. You'll be very relaxed. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh -huh. So we're home and it's time to clean up our treasures from the brocante. These are the ends of two fire dogs that I'm actually going to use as door stoppers. The chap at the brocante very generously gave them to us for about seven euros for the two. And then this very fabulous pie tin from my sister, from my mother. The beautiful candlestick. This is for my niece. It's an it's a vintage Yadro, and it's a very very dapper figure. I think she's gonna love that because she's into all things retro. And then Isabella got these. 
to take back to university. They're really fun and festive. And now I just have to grab the mirror out of the car. I am now using some oil to prevent this from rusting further. And look at the difference. Old and rusty. Very lovely indeed. And goodbye, ugly doorstop. Hello. Lovely doorstop. <laughs> and there's the other one. Let's learn how to decoupage some yeah, Easter eggs. let's go. Is this something that you've always had a burning desire to learn how to do? Not really, but I'm <laughs> happy to give it a shot. Okay. So what you need is a pair of scissors. Yes. Some thin napkins. Okay. I've pulled out an assortment, okay. including my personal favorite, right which is the winecorn. Okay. Not really Eastery, but the right colors. Uh -huh. We didn't have much of a selection because we went shopping to the one and only store that was open on a Sunday. Okay. What are we supposed to do with them? So, cut out as many little shapes and patterns as you like. And then we will go to the next step, which is applying the glue. And just use one ply. You don't need double ply. Okay. I think you need... Okay, I'm gonna start with the bird. And so I'm taking apart the back ply and only keeping the top layer. Oh yeah. And then I will start cutting out little shapes. Now what are you doing? I'm cutting out little bunnies. You're cutting out little bunnies. Oh, Look, yeah. you've got a bunch of little bunnies. Yeah, they're all gonna go on the eggs. I'm pretty excited to see what you're gonna do with all those little bunnies. They're gonna go on the eggs. I'm gonna do like a, a, a bunny Easter egg. Well, it might even be a masterpiece, who knows? Well, I think that there's no question of that. Yeah. The, the Easter Bunny thinks so. He's saying, yes, it's Easter gonna be wonderful. Bunny. Right, so you're supposed to put that on that's way too thick. Yeah. A really thin layer and only about half at a time. Yeah. Because otherwise you'll get your fingers all sticky and then the paper will get sticky and stick to your fingers. And something tells me that that'll make you grumpy. That might happen, it might not happen. Uh -huh. Perfect, now. All right, now I what you need, need are uh... some small pieces. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a way to do it. So if you cut smaller individual strips, mm -hmm. then you can stick them on one after the other. And what you do is you do a thin layer on the egg, put your piece of paper down, mm -hmm. stick it, and then you take this glue, which is a craft glue in the States, they call it Mod Podge. Mm -hmm. and, and then you go over the paper as well, gently, because you also don't want to rip the paper. Mm -hmm. Well, we did it, and they didn't come out too badly after all. I think next year we might do a little more searching for some more exclusive papers and also work on our technique a little bit. But for now, not too shabby. Fishing. Go on fishing. <laughs> fishing for my hot dogs. <laughs> the fact is, you could actually put a number of them on the end here and just cook everybody's. 
Well, be careful. It sounds like you just volunteered. So show me how that worked out for you exactly. <sighs> Yeah, well, they your fell fishing off. expedition. They fell right? off the skewer. There needs to be a little modification made to the skewer. Yes. But Meanwhile, your daughter has the right idea. Of course. Of course. Because she's, she's the smart one. She's the smart one. This is when? Oh! <laughs> <Well, laughs> well, the bar's very low here, Jack. <laughs> I'm fishing mine out of the fire. <laughs> so, if you, yeah, if you kind eat of, that. That's kind of where we're at. Is that mine went in the fire, so. The thing is, no one thinks you're actually going to eat it. except Easter barbecue. barbecue. Yeah, go for my method. What are you doing? Oh, Jack. Yeah, perfectly cooked. He's trying to prove that the man method works. The I don't think this does work. That's what all men try to do, isn't it? Try to prove they're better than grass. We are better. He's, 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 improve, he's improving on the research of his elders. Exactly. I intend on succeeding. You see that? You see that? Look at that. This is not this one. That, okay, I see where you're going with it. And yeah. It's all credit. That's, yeah. that's, a, that's a modification, which is definitely looking better. I think that will work. Now, the thing you've got to watch out is that when it comes to the end and you pull them in, they don't slip. Yeah. Because that's what happened with mine. Yeah. I love apology. <laughs> you know, I did an internship with NASA about astrology. <laughs> <laughs> Napoleon was a big believer in astrology. Napoleon was the last one. When you press me to your heart, I'm in a world apart. And now it's time for cheese of the week. We picked out a lovely cheese. Uh -huh. Tell us about it. What is this cheese that we've got? So this is a camembert with mm -hmm. fleur de lin in French, or in English, as you would say, is a camembert with flaxseed. So. That doesn't sound very appetizing, but I got it because it looks like a very pretty flower. So I thought oh. it was very fitting for Easter. That's nice. I like it. So yeah. do you want to try? And what have we got to have with it? Some nice brioche? Toasted brioche. So they have a rule in France of never cut off the end of a cheese which gets very tricky when they have come in odd shapes. Yeah. So I'd assume for this one, you cut it like most round cheeses in France and yeah. just go for the pie. I think you can, yeah, like a, like a piece of pie. Yeah, it's always a safe bet if you don't know what to do. Yeah. Otherwise, that's good. try not to cut through the actual flowers. Yeah, don't, don't, the lily, lily won't taste very nice. <laughs> Speaking from experience. Have you had enough of flowers in your dessert from our tiramisu? And I'm still, it's still an acquired taste, so I'm not sure I've acquired it yet. Do you want more? No, that's like, for us to taste it, that's perfect. How much cheese you guys actually eat during Cheese of the Week? Well, for Cheese of the Week, we don't really eat the whole cheese. <laughs> what do you think? For those of you who have had camembert before, it tastes like a very mild camembert mixed oh. with a hint of goat's cheese in the middle as a middle layer. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. For those of you who may be unfamiliar with that, the best way I can describe it is sort of a nutty foretaste when you first bite mm. into it, quite light, quite refreshing almost. And then as it sort of progresses, the aftertaste becomes more creamy almost mm. and more sharp, which is quite nice. It's really good. Can you see how the seed goes all the way through? Oh, that's interesting. That's the seed there. So it goes all the way through the it's like an cheese. Flower. Now it is a cow's cheese, but let's see if it does have that goaty flavor that not. Isabella is referring to. You love the pot. Mm -mm. You like oh, it? Mm -hmm. Good. Mm. Definitely have that again. Yeah. That's very good. Happy Easter, everyone!
me to your 